A great golden crown stands over the beautiful city of Stockholm. The people call this city the Venice of the North because of all the rivers and canals. It's clean and really beautiful. Sometimes I wonder why we didn't get lost. Seems like everywhere we went, the road signs were in a different language. We'd fly from wet, cold climates to the tropics. Wasn't always easy to get used to the change of weather. In Puerto Rico, they've got men who shinny up coconut trees like you take a walk down the street. Look out below. While we're in the canal zone, I got to drive the car over to the Panama Canal. In Mexico, we got to see some great old Spanish churches and met a couple of great young Spanish girls. Even learned a few words of Spanish. We even landed on the Cocos Island to refuel during a long overwater hop. That Pan American crew really knew how to handle their plane. Even when it rained, people came out to watch the turbine. It seemed like going or coming, we couldn't miss for that part. the people, but even the koala bears in Australia took a second look at that turban. We entered Sydney, Australia, over the famous bridge which no one ever forgets. I suppose there are bigger bridges, but this one is the symbol of Sydney. Wellington was a lot quieter than Sydney. Tokyo. Neon and noise. A fancy sign that Ginza puts Times Square in the shade. Pan American sent along a couple of loading specialists who only had one job to do. But they did it often and they did it well. It was getting that car safely on and off the DC-7. There was exactly one inch clearance at the doorway. Australia, where Chrysler has a lot of big plants, we showed the turbine to the workers. Boy, were they ever interested. You should have seen them crowd around the car, Dad. They even cheered us. It made us all feel real good. And then, of course, there were the girls. Pretty girls. I got a different kind of thrill from the girls we saw on the trip. Found out you have to be very careful how you speak to a girl in the Far East. I can tell you one thing. There isn't a girl in the world, not in the whole wide world, that wouldn't go for a guy in a Chrysler turban. I just happen to know.
Lady, every girl we met wanted a ride in the turban. But the only ones who could were reporters. Then there was a strange, quiet girl high on the hill near Manila. She watched us pass. Wish I could have talked to her. At least knowing her name. Dad, you used to say that people in the old country weren't interested in automobiles and modern things. Maybe that was true 30 years ago, but it sure isn't true today. Everywhere we went, we found everybody interested in the turbine. They knew about Chrysler engineering, too. There just wasn't anybody that wasn't interested in the car. They talked to us about Chrysler engineering in Turkey, South Africa, Australia, and everywhere. The Japanese took the most pictures. They couldn't get over how the engine didn't vibrate any. And so it went one month, two months, three months. About then, frankly, I... I got pretty darn homesick. In South Africa, they wouldn't believe us when we said this car would run on cognac. So, we gave it a try. It worked, of course. Some people started out being skeptical. Some people just couldn't believe their eyes. But everybody was curious. No matter how often we saw it happen, and we saw it every day, the sight of all those people gawking at us around Chrysler Turbine gave me a thrill. It seemed to me we accomplished our purpose on the tour. We showed the world what Chrysler engineers can do. Demetrius, I'm glad you had the chance to see so much of the world. I never thought it's possible. I'm glad you got to see it when you are young. When you are young, you're at home wherever you are. Pop, you'd have been right at home in all the plants we visited. Some of them look like the Plymouth Assembly Line. <laughs> they got good craftsmen there. Do you remember when Chrysler decided to build the turbine body? Well, they contracted with the gear people in Italy. Those Italians built the turbine bodies by hand. Boy, were they artists. For us in the turbine lab, the engine was all hat by now. But we sure found it wasn't to the rest of the world. Again and again, they asked us to explain how it worked, why it was better. So we told them we'd been working on the turbine for years and years. This wasn't the first model we made. Ours isn't the only turbine engine, but it's the best. We really licked the problem of high exhaust temperature. The turbine ran like a top. Our job was to keep it running. But being a Chrysler product, we didn't have much to do, except fine tuning. Still, we only had one car with us, and when we got to places like India and Singapore and New Zealand, we were a long way from home with another turbine. We met some great guys. A lot of them didn't speak much English. But you know how you can kind of sense a friendly feeling? And just watching how they handled their tools made you feel real good, too.